Hey, the biblical truth of our hymns. Today, joy to the world, the Lord is come. And we look forward today, we already done a talk on Isaac Watts. And the words are, in, are by an English hymn writer, Isaac Watts, based on the second half of Psalms 98 in the Bible. So, Psalms 98 too. The Lord has made known his salvation. <laughs> Forgive me. Oh, sorry about that. Psalms 98, verse 4 through 9. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp. <clears throat> with the harp and the voice of a psalm. With trumpets and sound of a coronet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar, let the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world, and the people with equity. Now that's a second Advent passage. The first time Jesus Christ came as the Lamb of God, he came to, to die and suffer, to be buried and come from that grave three days and three nights the gospel that we may be saved the second time he's coming as a lion in the tribe of judah to pass judgment on those who will not believe on the lord jesus christ those especially when he comes back who have sided with satan the antichrist watts wrote the words joy to the world is a hymn glorifying christ's triumphal return at the end of the age and the end of the age will be jacob's trouble at the end of seven years Rather than a song celebrating his first coming. What? Wait a minute. Watts wrote the words, Joy to the world is a hymn glorifying the triumphant return at the end of the age. Rather than a song celebrating his first coming, and joy to the world the Lord has come, in this hymnal it is listed as birth. This is ranked with the Christmas carol, the first coming of Jesus Christ, and the hymn, the writer, wrote it for the second coming. Somebody has not distinguished between the comings of the advents of Jesus Christ. It's under birth. It should be under second coming. Little, little problem there. Not the problem of Isaac Watts. The problem of the people who said, let's put this song under the birth of Jesus. We have no idea what we're talking about. As of the 20th century, the joy to the world was the most published Christmas hymn in North America. It's not about Christmas. And Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. December 25th was not the birthday of Jesus. Christ Mass. Christ Mass. Put a space between T and M. You've got Mary's Christ Mass. What would North America know about God in the Bible? What would they know? They glorify money, sex, and Hollywood. They have nothing to know about the Bible. The music origin are unclear. The name Antioch is generally, and when you find the tone, is generally used for the tune. It's often attributed to George Frederick Handel, 1685 to 1759, on the grounds of a chance resemblance. To choruses in the Oriental, Oriental Messiah, premiered 1747. Not least because a theme of the refrain and heaven and nature sing appears similarly to the orchestral, excuse me, some words I can't say, orchestral, O R C H E S T R A L, opening and accompaniment of the Oh boy, my mouth is tied up. Oh, the complement of the recital, Comfort Ye. Likewise, the first four notes seem to match the beginning of the chorus. Lift up your heads in glory to God from the same arterial. Arterio. I don't know the, the pronunciation of these words of music. I apologize. However, there is no autograph score by Hondo and no currently known documentary evidence to suggest that Hondo wrote it.
So Antioch means, at best, a skillful collection of borrowing from Hondo. In the Latter-day Saints hymnal, the Mormons, the refrain in the first verse is, All saints and angels sing. Modern recordings include those aimed at children such as Veggie Tales, part of a very Veggie Christmas, the singing Christmas tree. Just told you the song wasn't about Christmas. It's about the second advent of Jesus Christ. Shows you people do not know history. People do not study. They're stupid. I don't care if you can't say that word. I don't know any dumb word for stupid people. And Disney sing-along version often omit the third verse. So let's see what Disney. Oh, I want to take my Christian family down to Disney World. Let's see what they do not include. Part three, verse three, stanza three. No more let sins and sorrows grow. Yeah, we can't sell our tickets from the junk of sin. Nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make us. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found. I guess Disney wants the curse. I guess Disney doesn't, doesn't want Jesus Christ to come and relieve this world of sin and of, and of uh, the curse that's put upon the ground. Sin will be judged right there by Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. The curse will be removed, set off the serpent. He'll still eat the dust. I guess Disney does not want that curse to be removed because they would flourish and make much money without Jesus. Because you know what Jesus Christ do? He will come. He's going to rid the world of moneyism. He's going to rid the, the world of, of people who take advantage of people. He'll definitely get rid of Disneyland. You can't find Disneyland, anything, the characters thereof, in the Bible. So, that's what Disney gets rid of. Don't go to Disney, go to church. Don't go to Disney, open up your Bible and study it. So let's look at some other things. Myra Carey, whoever she is, version was first released as a promo on November 1994. The song was re-recorded, the hymn, not a song, it's a hymn. By Isaac Watts, about Jesus Christ, it's a hymn. Today, church is called, all right, take, take the song books. We're going to sing this song. Taken from her fourth studio album, Merry Christmas, 1994. It has nothing to do with Christmas. People are so stupid. It combines the chorus with slightly altered lyrics of the Hoyt Angston son, song, Joy to the World. Made popper by Three Dog Night with the traditional Christmas song. And we're not mixing rock and roll in the churches today. Three Dog Night. My parents wouldn't even let me have that album, you know, with the vinyl, the black albums. They used to play in the record player. My parents wouldn't even let me. And some of the music they allowed me to have, they wouldn't let me have them. Whitney Houston. Recorded the song for the pastor's wife, original soundtrack, album. The preacher's wife, the woman that was born in a Baptist church and grew up with a Baptist church and took her talents and gave them to the world. Oh, in the name of God, I'll call an album The Preacher's Wife. That'll get me credits with God. God, don't you see The Preacher's Wife, original soundtrack? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. You use your talent for the world. And also include it on One Wish, the holiday album, 2003. In the sitcom Two and a Half Men, Charlie Seen, Parnicator, sang a pardoning of the song with sexual dialogue, causing a rebuke from the American Family Association. You mean that that man that, that of Hollywood of all the filth is gonna take such a great song as Joining to the World, the Lord has come? Wait till he sees the Lord. 
Second Advent, joy to the world. After he moves the goats, the king correct. Here is the king, Second Advent passes, not of the church, but the king that will sit in Jerusalem, in David's throne, with Israel in their land, with the, with the disciples, the apostles on the thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, with the saints that have served the Lord and done correctly, ruling in judges in cities. The trees in the Bible will clap, and that is a, can I use the word weird? Because the Bible does mention trees clapping. Are you going to take that literal? Not today. But what if the trees do clap when Jesus Christ? Does not Disney, does not cartoons have pictures? Was it not one of the pictures of Hollywood, of Wizard of Oz? Didn't they not have trees and their limbs come alive like humans? Stealing from the Bible. The recording of the last end of the verse, three, three times. Again, it's mentioned three times, and personally, I don't like that. Uh, one, let's see. It said, in heaven, heaven, nature sing, in heaven, and nature sing, in heaven, and nature sing, in heaven. I, that, I don't like. To me, that's, that's getting awfully close to today's contemporary music. But, I mean, this was written in 1719. So. Uh, rain in a thousand years, king, singing and rejoicing, joy in the land, First Samuel 4, 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Imagine what Israel is going to shout when their king comes, when their king comes to bring them into the land, when the king comes to give them that, that new heart, when the king comes, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. They won't yell, crucify him. People will sin. And face the judgment in a thousand year round. There is sin. There's also the lake of fire where God will tell you after you've been judged. By the saints. By the apostles. And by Jesus. Go jump in the lake. There are still after the thousand year reign when Satan's loose. He gathers an army. An ultimate army. There are no more thorns. The curse is gone. Except for the serpent. I've already said. Isaiah 65, 25. The wolf. And the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullet. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. Genesis 3. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. So let's look at the words. I'm not going to sing them. <laughs> Take care of your ears. Joy to the world. It wasn't joy to the world the first advent. It wasn't joy to the world Christmas when they call Christmas. Christmas is not Bible. But joy to the world when that raiment of Jews that have fled from the Antichrist have gone into a wilderness where God has prepared a place for them. When they look off, when the sun is dark and the moon is no more and the lights don't give off their light and they see that light coming. It's a man on a white horse. King of kings, Lord of lords, he's come. The Messiah has come. Joy to the world and behind him those that have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is come. Now the Bible does that. The Bible speaks present even though yet yeah, it hasn't happened. Makes you wonder if at that time when Jesus does come back, if joy to the world, the Lord has come. Maybe that will be broken out and sung by us. Let the earth receive her king, and it will. If you don't want the king, you'll be a goat, and you'll be by that fire that comes out of his eyes, and the sword that comes out of his mouth. You don't want him as king? Bye. Let every heart prepare his room, and heaven and nature say. <laughs> okay. What if the trees do start clapping at that point? What if the animals start speaking? And as spoke in the Bible, maybe the animals spoke with Adam and Eve. I don't know. The Bible says the animals are crying out because of the sin of man. 
joy to the earth. The world is the people. The earth is that planet we live on. The dirt, the rock, the water. Joy to the earth. The earth will enjoy because the curse of Genesis 3 will be removed. The Savior reigns and he will reign. Not reigning now, but he will. A prophetic song, prophetic end. Even I said song. Let all their songs employ. Let it be. Let it be our occupation of the earth and of the trees and all. Let it be to Jesus. While fields and floods, rocks and hills and plains, repeat the sound in joy. Oh, what the earth will be joyful when Jesus comes. At one time they told Jesus, tell the kids to shut up. He said, if I, if I halt them, he says, even the rocks will cry out. No more let sin and sorrows grow. Uh, Disneyland, Disney does not want verse 3. I want verse 3. I want a time which will happen when I die, New Jerusalem. No sin. I want the time when I can think and not have to question what I think. I want the time that when I'm going to do something, I do not have to examine to see if it's right. Or it's wrong it will always be right that's not now it's not a Christmas carol it's a second advent and sorrows grow let no more sins and sorrows grow Revelation 22 speaks about God removing the sorrows wiping the tears away from our eyes Revelation 21 well, there is coming a time through Jesus Christ. No more sorrow. No more sin. For those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet when he comes back as the Messiah. And the nation of Israel receives him as their Messiah. As the answer to who they've been waiting for. Not crying out Hosanna. But here he, I mean not crying out uh, crucify him. But crying out Hosanna. To remove the sins of Israel. To remove the sorrows of Israel. How many years of years and years and years have the nation of Israel been in sorrow, been tormented by the devil, tormented and accused by the world, hated? And yet there will be one ruler that will come and love them Jews and receive those Jews, Jesus Christ. This stanza, this line, removed from Disneyland. And there were... There are reports and there's no strict standard that written down firm in stone or pen and ink that many have accused Walt Disney himself of being anti-Semitism against the Jews. Now, I can't prove that. But stanza three that's not allowed in Disneyland is the fact for the Jews, for their salvation, for their relief, for their new heart to be given to by God, Jesus Christ. Nor thorns infest the ground those thorns that came up in genesis 3 will disappear when jesus is on this earth for the thousand years no more thorns imagine we we give roses to our loved ones roses are beauty they're handed out at rewards they are highly esteemed among the plant but yet the thorns have to be snipped or they'll cut you Imagine the beauty of a, of a thornless rose. No thorns. Without the curse. With Jesus Christ, the creator of that rose. Imagine the beauty of that rose. In the thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the ultimate, more beauty than that, and than the lilies. Is the beauty of Jesus Christ. And the beauty of the nations of Israel. That receive him. He comes to make his blessings flow. Oh. Right now we get trials, tributes, and problems, and we do get the blessings of God. We do get the mercy of God. But this world is not our home. We're not home yet. 
far as the curse is found, that curse will be removed. He rules the world. No more president. No more Democrat. No more Republican. No more kings and queens. No more chancellors. He, Jesus Christ, comes to rule the world. With truth and grace. There you go. There's no truth in American politics. There's no truth in the monarch of England. There's no truth out through the rulers of all the world. Imagine, I always say it, imagine if God gave the man the Pinocchio nose. Every time he would tell a lie, any man, that nose would start growing. That would ruin the election year. That would ruin the ballot box. If you have to duck with that politician, if you're going to buy that car, you have to duck because that nose grows. But Jesus Christ, without lie, the Bible says God is incapable. He will never lie. He cannot lie. He will not lie. That God, Jesus Christ, will sit on the throne with truth and grace. And makes the nations prove. There will be nations there. Sheep nations. Nations that have helped the Jews. And visited the Jews. And took care of the Jews. And with for the Jews, with the Antichrist out to kill the Jews. Sheep nations that took care of the Jews. Matthew. Let the glories of his righteousness, not mine, Jesus. And all the wonders of his love. For God so loved the world. For the love of Jesus Christ, he suffered on that cross. For the love of people that, for the people that were of his he came unto his own, his own received them not. Still he loves them. Though they rejected him, though they put him on the cross, though they put him to the Roman government. If a Jewish man, a Jewish woman, Jewish child now were to bend the knee and ask Jesus Christ to save them, he would save them, he would give them a new life, a new birth. A new heart. He will adopt them into the family of God. And when he comes back the second advent, when they receive the Messiah, when they receive Jesus Christ, he will take them in. The Bible says he'll wash away the sins of Israel. He will not remember the sins of Israel no more. I would include this hymn. It would not be just a Christmas. I do have one problem and I've, we've seen this over and over and probably if you follow these you know what the problem is I do not see Jesus mentioned I do not say see J-E-S-U-S -S. that disturbs me with the hymns if it's supposed to be about God and Jesus Christ a name above all names at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow you would think in a hymn for Jesus you would find Jesus this one don't I'd find somewhere to put Jesus like I said I'm working on it right now if the Lord does give me a church I'm going to make my own hymn though. I'm going to print up our own hymn. And there was a hymn we, we sang the other day. I forget what it was. And it says the angels sing. I'm going to change that. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Now there is nothing wrong with that hymn. But it says the angels sing. The Bible says it. They said. I would change that. In the printing of my church hymn. If the Lord will allow me. To say. But somewhere. You know this hymn here. Somewhere I would find. Um. Somewhere, uh, I mean, Savior, we know who that is, but do, does the world. If I were to pick up this hymn and sing on the streets of street preaching. We are in a day and an age that people don't know who Jesus Christ is. Sorry. I would find somewhere, at least to put Jesus somewhere. I'm just looking at it real quick. Not, that's not the time, but. Other than that, this hymn would be in. The list of my hymns. And again, remember, Isaac Watts writ this hymn, Psalms 98, for the second coming of Jesus Christ 
and the idiots of this hymnal, and probably other stupid people in other hymnals. I'm going to look at other hymnals. I, I just, Lord, show me that right now. Put it under the birth, or they'll probably say Christmas and other ones. It has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. Judgment comes at the second coming. So with that fact, as this is in the Christmas section, why is not this hymn sung all year round? At the moment of the twinkle of an eye, at any moment the Lord can come. And within seven years after that, he's coming back as what this hymn is speaking about. Hopefully I'd be found faithful to God to be riding behind Jesus. But remarkable. I've been saved since 1987. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. I do not remember the last time I sung this song. Can't you? I, I see, I do it too. This hymn. I can't remember. I can probably think back to the church way back when we were sung it, or even another church. Dang. I said, I'm not going to sing it to y'all, spare your ears. <laughs> you know, we read that, you know, make a joyful noise in the, unto the Lord. That's me. <laughs> when I sing, it's a joyful noise to the Lord. It's a character to the people around. 